All right, welcome. I'm going to do a quick comparison, actually a new section in the Traveler Companion Update 2024. So we we both see the original uh, or of recent Travel Companion, Traveler Companion, and then we have uh, recently released Traveler Companion Update 2024. Um, Drive through RPG. I bought this on, and you get both of these for the price. Um, and I was kind of poking around. I haven't done an exhaustive comparison, but amongst other things, you're going to see formatting, fonts, etc. They've tweaked that some, but I did go through all of the sections, <clears throat> and all of the sections are present in both, except the companion has an additional section called dun dun dun. Vector-based space combat, which I just clicked on. Um, this does not exist over here. Okay, if you, I did some spaceship combat tests earlier. I, I think I did the standard Traveler one, uh, where you end up with range bands, dogfight potential, and then I tried the Cephas one, similar. Uh, neither of those use any kind of uh, <coughs> hexagonal or square grid. Um, but if you do go back, I did look at GURPS Traveler, and they did have a hexagonal-based, uh, I would assume vector-based too, but I'll be honest, when I looked at the whole GURPS system, it's it's tempting, but, I mean, that's just a whole other framework, and uh, I just decided, no comment on, you know, what's better or anything, I just decided to stick with the Mongoose one. Uh, I could reach all the way back to GDW's Mayday, I think that's what it was, where they originally started that vector-based combat. So I find it real interesting that now they're coming back somewhat to it. I've skimmed it, um, and there's some interesting stuff here. Um, and I definitely want to try it out. So in this video, I just wanted to take a quick look at it. So um, yeah, here I moved to my highlighted version. Um, so they do talk about how in the Traveler Core rulebook, um, it's basically based on its simple range bands, um, dogfighting concept, etc. But uh, and then if you look at High Guard, they do have a somewhat uh, I don't know how to describe it area based, um, but these rules are going back to traditional well hexagons is kind of what I'm used to being a war gamer. Um, let's see. To be honest, when I compared the Traveler Core and the uh, Cephas one, I did like the Cephas one. It's more cinematic, and you don't end up blowing up and killing everybody. Um, if you go back and review my videos, you know, so for a character-based RPG, I'd lean more towards Cephas because it's not just about taking out whole points and blowing people up. You've got to actually get a combination of die rolls to pull that off, and most of the time, both sides, uh, my, my impression is, will end up disabling each other and withdrawing from battle. So in one sense, that I like that set for if I'm doing a kind of an RPG role-playing. But if I'm doing um, straight space combat, um, I'm a big fan of Starfire, uh, which has been out for a while, too. Uh, and I did Mayday in the day. And so this is really interesting to me to try out in my next uh, chance uh, of space combat in my campaign. So um, just some points they make. Uh, Separate is add the ability to calculate range, hexes, um, and then they do make some um, elements of realism are ignored that are interesting. And they do mention playing this on virtual tabletops. Uh, my intent would be to play it in my vassal. I've already set up for that. Uh, combat is two-dimensional, okay, uh, and that kind of carries here. Uh, spacecraft facing is ignored. Now that's interesting. Now I could be moving in one direction, but I could use thrusters to pivot um, when we're talking about momentum. Uh, and then therefore, there is no real facing and field of fire, I guess. Ships may pivot any needed over the course of a six minute space combat round, even when expending normal thrust to move forward. Okay, so apparently you expend the thrust. And then you pivot during that, and before you expend thrust again, you get back to the direction you want, I guess. Um, you can do hexagons or squared squares. Uh, I'm going to do hexagons. Uh, movement of missiles. And I've skimmed through that. It makes sense. We're going to see in some sense you're plotting out and seeing where you're going for ships. But missiles just 
accelerate maximum speed for number of turns they have endurance, and they just head towards the target. That keeps things a bit easier. <clears throat> and they're not going to take gravitational effects into effect here. Okay. Um, and uh, adds on to the space combat chapter in the core rules. Um, yeah, instead of rage bands, we're using hexagons. Uh, I think it's like 850 kilometers is each hex. And they've added some phases during each maneuver step. An acceleration phase is added immediately before the movement phase and in which each ship declares changes to its current vector. Okay. Because of scale, um, specific rules are added for entering in a dogfight range. See that both in Cephas and the core rules. Dogfighting means you're close in. Um, basically, you got to be in the same hex using these rules and at the same vector. And then both want to engage in the dogfight, or if one does and the other doesn't, it's a pilot opposed role. Uh, yeah, and there's, you, know, you define an axis here, and then you'll see acceleration is defined as, you know, negative or positive along that axis. Now, in a sense, the square one is easier. Yeah, you've just got the X and the Y. Um, this one could be a little tougher here. Uh, you can do a physical map or you can do a virtual. Got to make sure the map's big enough. A hexagonal axis effectively have three axes. That one axis provides a straight line between the opposing. Yeah, and this way movement in the third axis. Yeah, so they get into this and I'm going to have to grapple with this. How They, they record it with numbers. You kind of record the numbers. I'm tempted by the Mayday method. You see your GURPS where you, you actually put a three markers out for a ship, I think, previous, current, and future. And then by looking at that, you can adjust your thrust uh, based on that. And of course, your thrust is going to be your G rating. And here they talk about how to use a square grid. Here we see initially the ship is not moving, and then you say for your acceleration, maybe your, your acceleration, <coughs> your thrust is four. <coughs> so you pour all four in the X direction, so you go that way. Here's the diagonal. You see you can do a... And they're assuming this direction is positive, this direction is negative, up is positive, down is negative. <clears throat> so you see where you can get these minus two twos, etc. <clears throat> and then this one is a three one. So you see one, two, three, and up one. Again, I don't know if... I kind of like the Mayday. One started with Mayday where you place it <clears throat> where you're going to end up, and then you can adjust your thrust based on that. Uh, hex grid, we see the same thing. Four in the X direction here. <clears throat> this one looks like a uh, yeah minus four in the Y direction. And notice it's not straight down. It's the Y becomes a diagonal. And then here we got a uh, minus two, two. So you go up two and left two. Uh, I think that'll work. Well, no, I'm sorry. Now we're here. I'm, I was looking at square. My bad. Yeah, and here they add the second, the third axis here, a Z axis. Um, Z axis. Yeah, and this is what I got to wrestle with. So then you have three digits. So um, X is this way, Y is that way, Z is that way. And then you plot your speed. Again, I'm instead of using these numbers, I like the where you're going to be kind of plotting thing here. And uh, let's see what we got here. Z44, four, four, so 3, 4, and then 4 over, or however you want to do it. So, kind of wrestle with that, but again, Mayday, you know, placing where you're going to be seems pretty good. Map scale. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see other ranges. Map size 100 spaces in the long direction. Um, there is quite a passing in the night kind of stuff. Two ships opposing vectors, high speeds. They kind of just fly by each other and take a shot, and that's it. Um, and then they talk about the range in spaces. Adjacent or close here in the same space. Uh, short, uh, it's up to the referee if they want to count short ranges, one or two. Then we got medium, long, very long, distant. Okay. Uh, here we go, map scale, 648 clicks. Um, yep. Facing doesn't matter. 
And then they say some other things you could add to the counter. Maybe their armor class or their hit points, just for informational. Then you have to have some way to uh, notate um, you know, what their movement is here. And then they do talk about if you've got a reaction drive. Uh, so you got an M drive of 5, reaction drive of 3. You could annotate that. Ships moving together, maybe fighters, missile salvo, squadron. You can use one counter. Here they give some example counters. Um, could clip those out. Uh, and then there's objects in space that you can place. Uh, I think they show that later. Now they detail the round segment. And each ship in reverse initiative order determines how much thrust they will apply. So that's good. You're not doing simultaneous plotting so I can do it solo. And then they adjust their vectors. Okay. And yeah, and here it is. It can be helpful for travelers to use temporary tokens to visualize where their ships would move if they don't apply any thrust. There we go back to that Mayday concept of your future position, which is kind of what I'd lean towards. Because then you don't necessarily, well, yeah, basically what it was is you shifted it. You shifted all your stuff up. You moved the current to the new current, and then you moved that to the new future. Um, if missiles are in flight, add the missile's maximum thrust to their current speed each turn until they run out of gas or hit the target. Now you think, why can't I maneuver around these missiles? You do take that into effect. You save some of your thrust. Like a, a ship doesn't use all its thrust for you know, acceleration maneuvering. Save some, and then that becomes a die roll modifier uh, when the missiles attack. And the movement phase is kind of an afterthought. You just move them. You've already figured it out in the acceleration phase. And then they talk about missiles. The only thing you worry about missiles is what's their speed and how many turns they have left before they run out of gas. <coughs> um, and you may record if you're using high guard, you can have different types of missiles. Uh, let's see, and the number of rounds thrust left. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so you'd record the firing ship target, number of missiles in the salvo. And then we'd go from there. Um, let's see. Missiles do not accelerate any further on the round. Which they fire. Then they explain how you do the launch based on the uh, launching ship. And the missiles move. And then they can accelerate 10 towards the target. And then missiles can be destroyed via EW point defense. Um, different ways there. Uh, remove the token, da, da 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 Okay. Let's see. And then they talk about increasing. This is something they had in Starfire. The initial Starfire only had one tactical map, but then they made an operational map and a strategic map, and you had to move from one to the other. Kind of seeing that same concept here. So, um, and then dogfighting. How do you f drop into that dogfighting? Both ships must end their movement for a round in the same space with the same vectors. Uh, let's see, and if you have higher initiative, you can try and maneuver to do that. And then we can go drop into the dogfight rules, Traveler, Traveler Core rulebook. Um, but if only one ship wants to dogfight, if neither wants to dogfight, they don't dogfight. If, ne if one does, it's an opposed pilot role. And here they make a special exception instead of waiting until you've done all your movement to fire ships that pass in the night like it's as they get close to each other they could take their shot as they're passing uh initiative ship first okay that's their concept of pass in the night yeah so there we go this is a whole new section um the details of the combat are still in the core rules uh so i am tempted yeah here's some example here's a gas giant uh, and we do know it's 650 kilometers so we can size stuff based on that, um, ice comet, etc. So this looks interesting. Um, so in my next uh, opportunity to either have actual or just a hypothetical space ship combat, I think I'm going to take a shot at this new vector-based space combat, which, let's be honest, isn't necessarily totally new. It, it goes all the way back to GDW's Mayday. 
Um, so it seems like they're, they're giving you an opportunity to bring that back and try that again. So, but beyond that, I haven't done a lot of jumping around into uh, what's different otherwise. Beyond just the formatting, um, you'll see the formatting here is different. Um, I was looking at gas giant operations again. And the content is pretty much the same, but you do see how the format looks different here. Um, yeah, and they go into this, so I'm, I'm going to be putting these rules again through their paces in my campaign because uh, the Intrepid needs to refuel here in the caravan system. Yeah, the only real difference I'm seeing is they had a graphic here and a graphic here, but the content is the same. So my guess is a lot of the content is going to be the same between the... Um, relatively new original and the 2024 uh, update. This hasn't been out too long, I don't think. Well, 2018. So they may have slipped some other stuff in here. I'll have to uh, go through and take a look uh, and see because this one is 2023. So we'll see what kind of updates they did. But there we go. That was a quick video. I just wanted to show you this new section in the... Um, yeah, in the updated companion, uh, which is actually an answer to something I wanted. I, if you saw my previous videos, I was poking around, looking at GURPS, looking at Mayday, trying to figure out how to incorporate it, and uh, lo and behold, here it is in the companion. So again, I'll be trying that out um, the next time I have a space combat situation. All right, so uh, that'll end it here. Uh, hopefully you're going to get back to our crew on the Intrepid and their system survey and the caravan system, I think it was, is what I named it. We'll see how that goes. And beyond that, if you like, click like, comments appreciated, and otherwise subscribe so you get notified for my next video. And see you at my next video.